I'm David Yarson. I'm the director of the Center for Resource Management and Environmental Studies, CEMIS, at the University of the West Indies KVL Campus in Barbados. I am a senior lecturer in agri-food systems and environmental management. Food security traditionally has been defined to exist when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food that meets their dietary needs and food preferences for an active and healthy lifestyle. This is according to the World Food Summit organized in 1996. For the purposes of One Health and elevating for security to the domain of human security, I prefer to define food security as the efforts to safeguard and improve the quality and quantity of food supply from critical and pervasive threats to guarantee the stability of availability, access and utilization of food for active, healthy lifestyles. This definition brings a kind of intentionality to the definition and brings an element of proactiveness to defending the basis of food security from critical and pervasive threats. The dimensions of food security are four. They are availability, which refers to the physical availability of food. The second is utilization. And this means the healthy and physiological use of food. The next dimension is access, which refers to the economic and physical access to food. So food may be physically available, but not economically or socially accessible to certain groups of people. The final dimension is its, um, stability, where all the previous dimensions are guaranteed to, be, to remain stable and functional over time. In the Caribbean, uh, we know that food insecurity has been a problem for a long time. A recent survey by the World Food Programme showed that a significant number of the Caribbean population are food insecure. Uh, a recent one shows that at least 52% of the Eastern Caribbean English-speaking countries are food insecure and this corresponds to about 3.7 million people. And this actually represents a 10% reduction in the number of food insecure persons compared to last year. So this gives an indication of the magnitude of food insecurity in the Eastern Caribbean. Generally, almost 68% of the regional population are regarded as food insecure. There are many drivers of food insecurity in the Caribbean subregion or region. Um, we can talk of many several drivers, but there are important drivers. One main driver is climate change, where we've seen significant increase in drought occurrence and water shortages. So water underpins food, food production because food production globally accounts for about 70% of total water withdrawal. In Barbados, for example, um, agriculture accounts for at least 60-65% of total water withdrawal. And Barbados is amongst the top 10 water scarce regions in the world. Barbados relies entirely on groundwater for its food uh, production and portable water use. And we have seen increasing severity of drought and frequency of drought in the region. Even Dominica, where water is 
supposed not to be a problem, has seen frequent drought occurrences. And within agricultural production systems, drought or water deficit over very short time periods can have significant negative impacts on food production. And this is what we've seen in the Caribbean. So we've seen increasing drought and water scarcity limiting food production in the Caribbean. But another key driver that I believe has been neglected uh, is that we rely considerably on food imports. In fact, more than 50% of the English-speaking Eastern Caribbean countries have what I call monodominance in dietary food energy supply, which means that one single food commodity significantly supplies the largest proportion of the dietary energy of the population in the Eastern Caribbean. In this case, we find wheat and products as the monodominant food commodity, as the food commodity supplying the largest fraction of the dietary energy of the people. The Caribbean does not produce a single grain of wheat. So whatever happens with wheat supplies uh, related to trade, related to uh, shipping, related to prices, will inevitably translate to food insecurity in the Caribbean. We have seen that COVID-19 uh, resulted in significant rise in food insecurity. And in my perspective, this was not necessarily due to uh, a significant reduction in domestic food production, but it's because we significantly rely on wheat imports to secure our population in terms of food. We need to find a way to diversify our food consumption and our food production and diversify our tastes in the Caribbean. We need to find alternatives to wheat as the dominant source of dietary energy supply and corn as a dominant source of uh, energy supply in our animal feed. We must find alternatives and we must diversify our tastes. When we do that, we will be able to significantly remove ourselves from the realm of significant food insecurity to the realm of food security. Thank you very much for having me.